I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today about an issue that is so crucial to Iowans, to all Americans, and to working women in particular, as we've heard um, from several of the witnesses already today. Safe, affordable child care is essential, and I look forward to working with all members of this committee to help increase access to child care for working Americans. Um, as a working mom myself, mom to two boys, Max, who's 10, and Jax, who's eight, um, I know exactly what it means to balance a full-time job so that I can provide for my family while um, actually trying to raise that family at the same time. It's no easy feat for a working mom to juggle those demands. Um, I attended a virtual parent-teacher conference um, and then ran to the floor for votes at the Capitol. So you just have to figure out how to multitask. And um, just the other day, I was getting ready to do an interview over Zoom. The pot of mac and cheese I had just made for Max was just out of the frame of the camera. So um, I'm trying to make sure uh, my boys are healthy and happy, get on the bus on time, whether that's from my kitchen or from the U.S. Capitol. And I can only do this because I have an incredible support system, um, including my wonderful husband, Matt, um, and the boys' grandparents. And I can manage this because my boys are also finally in school again. So um, it was definitely harder when I was a news reporter and um, they were still very little, but um, it's clear to me that women bear the brunt of child care responsibility. And that means that it's usually women who end up leaving the workforce if they can't access it. Sometimes it's a choice that moms are making, and that's great if that's the choice, but too often it isn't a choice. Um, leaving the workforce is the requirement for moms because they don't have that safe, reliable, affordable access to child care. And right now we're in the middle of a she session. Uh, the pandemic has forced countless women out of the workforce to tend to their kids, raise their children as schools remain closed. And these same women are the ones having the hardest time reentering the workforce. This sheds light to me on an even bigger problem, which is that when women leave the workforce for an extended period of time, they face an uphill battle to reenter it. And this disproportionately affects women with families in rural areas. One of the biggest challenges facing women who want to actually stay in the workforce following a maternity leave is finding that reliable, safe, affordable child care. So we have to look at the root causes of the problem. What is it that makes that child care so hard to access? And the answer is pretty simple. Child care centers are few and far between, the wait lists are long, and costs are through the roof. Um, even if you can find a slot, chances are high you can't necessarily afford it. So that drove me to look a little bit deeper. And what I found are not only are those child care options few in number, but that centers are closing with alarming frequency. Prices aren't going down, they're going up. And the primary driver appears to be, um, in many cases, overburdensome regulations that are not necessarily focused on kids' safety, but that do drive up overall operating costs. So that means centers really have two choices. You can either lose money or you can raise prices, and that makes childcare unsustainable for small business owners and inaccessible for parents. So I'd like to share with you today some of the most problematic rules that are being pushed by state regulators. Some states require daycare providers to have college credit or even require a bachelor's degree to work at a daycare. Others have a laundry list of toys that aren't deemed stimulating enough for children. So let's be real here, this is right. Some places are banning toys, not based on safety, but whether or not someone thinks they're useful for more than playtime. Those are burdensome, unnecessary standards for child care providers to meet, and they increase the cost of doing business, resulting in fewer local providers and lost job opportunities. So my bill, the Child Care Accessibility Report and Evaluation Act, or the Child Care Act, would help reduce the cost of child care, give parents more control over their kids' care, and boost access to child care options by fostering a regulatory environment in which child care centers can thrive. In the end, overburdensome regulations restrict that access to child care, especially for lower income and rural families. New moms kept out of the workforce by shrinking pools of available care, long wait lists, and unaffordable rates. The Child Care Act aims to reverse this troubling trend. It's simple. It would direct the Secretary of Health and Human Services to submit a report to Congress analyzing the effects of state regulations on affordability and accessibility of child care. That's all. But we need that data so Congress can make informed decisions about where the regulatory patchwork um, is causing trouble, and then we need to reverse course. The data could be used to incentivize states to make responsible decisions about child care standards, like my own state of Iowa, which focuses on safety and access, while encouraging over-regulating states to change their methods and improve access at the same time. So I think we can all agree we need more child care options. We need to get women back in the workforce. And that cannot happen without improving that important access to child care. 
Um, with that, I thank you again for the opportunity to come before you and testify. And I urge your support for the Child Care Act. Um, and I welcome your questions. But again, thank you, Mr. Chair.